Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Fahrenheit 451 is a 1966 dystopian drama film that was directed by Francois Truffaut. The movie stars Julie Christie, Oscar Werner, and Cyril Cusack. It's based on a 1953 novel that bore the same name by Ray Bradbury. This was the famed director's first color film and his only non-French language film. The storyline for the movie goes that in this future society, all printed materials have been banned, forced by the fire department, whose role is to burn books, in an attempt to create a motionless, egalitarian society. But it's been pushed to the extreme. Guy Montag is a senior fireman who is much respected by his superiors, and he's in line for a big promotion. He doesn't question what he does or why he does it until he meets Clarice. As his doubts grow, he begins to steal some of the books he is meant to burn. The director kept a detailed diary during the whole production, and he later published that in both French and English. In this diary, he calls the film his saddest and most difficult filmmaking experience that he's ever done, mainly because of the intense conflicts between him and Oscar Werner. The production was Universal Pictures' first European endeavor. Julie Christie was originally cast as just Linda Montague, not both Linda and Clarice. The part of Clarice was offered to Gene Seberg and Jane Fonda, but they turned it down. After he gave it much thought, Truffaut decided that the characters should not have a villain-hero relationship, but rather be two sides of the same coin. And with this, they cast Julie Christie in both roles, although the idea actually came from the producer, Lewis Allen. Charles Aznavour was said to be the director's first choice to play the role given to Warner, but eventually the producers refused him for the reason that he was not familiar enough with the English-speaking audiences. Paul Newman, Peter O'Toole, and Montgomery Clift were also considered for this role, and they actually did cast Terrence Stamp, but he dropped out because he feared of being overshadowed by Christie's dual roles in the film. The production was shot at Pinewood Studios in England, and it features the Alton housing estate in South London. The final scene with the book people reciting their chosen books was filmed at Black Park near Pinewood in a rare unexpected snowstorm that occurred on Julie Christie's birthday, April 14, 1966. All the production work was done in French, as the director spoke virtually no English, and he expressed disappointment with the final cut of the film, saying it was full of unnatural English-language dialogue. He was much happier with the version that was dubbed for the French audience. Now, there was a lot of trouble on the set between the director and Oscar Werner. They hated each other by the end of the film. For the last two weeks of the project, they didn't even speak to one another. And Werner ended up cutting his hair for the final scene as a purposely done thing to create a continuity problem for the final cut of the film, done strictly because of his hate for the director. The producer, Lewis Allen, said the studio's legal department requested that only books in the public domain be shown burning for the fear of being sued by offended authors. The director and the producer completely ignored the request, believing that anyone would be flattered to have their book included in the film. Truffaut stated many times that he found science fiction films just completely uninteresting and arbitrary, but at some point a friend of his told him the story about Ray Bradbury's novel, Fahrenheit 451. Immediately afterwards, the director wanted to make a film from the novel and subsequently spent years raising the financing for the project. The monorail that's featured in the movie 
had been built in France in 1959 by a consortium as a test track. After production ended, it was completely dismantled and is no longer there. That monorail seems so bizarre because the way you enter and exit it is by a long set of steps that lead down to the ground from the belly of the car. The author, Ray Bradbury, didn't do any fact-checking in regards to the title of the film. He at one point asked a fire chief the temperature that book paper would burn. It said that the chief actually did burn a book because he didn't know what the answer was when Bradbury asked him. And when he did this, he took the temperature with a thermometer, and that's what it read. It was alleged by Tippi Hedren that the director sought her out for the female lead, but that Alfred Hitchcock, who had Hedren under contract, told him that she wasn't available to work with him. But this has all been denied by Truffaut's daughter, Laura, and also by the producer, Lewis Allen's son, all this being backed up by the casting files of Lewis Allen that are held at the Harry Ransom Center at the University of Texas at Austin. These files include correspondence with Julie Christie, Jane Fonda, Mia Farah, and Florence Henderson, but no mention of Tippi Hedren or Gene Seberg, for that matter, are in them. Now, this film has one of the strangest opening credits that you'll ever see. It's completely without any text and is all spoken. Originally, they had it spoken by actress Gillian Lewis, who appears later in the film as a television host. The director decided to replace her with a masculine voice and recorded actor Alex Scott, who portrays the leader of the book people, and that's his voice that remains in the final cut of the film. Now, Julie Christie is gorgeous, and she's really fun to watch in the movie because of these two different roles that she plays. She's one of the most beautiful stars from that era. But unfortunately for her co-stars, in almost all her films, where she had close physical interaction with them, like a lovemaking scene, she had an addiction that troubled all her male counterparts. You see, it seems that she loved a British favorite of egg sandwiches and ate them around the clock, even right before she would film a scene lip to lip with one of her co-stars. Omar Sharif was so disgusted with it because he said she had crumbs all over herself all the time, and when he had to kiss her, she'd have egg sandwich breath. Now, Omar Sharif wasn't in this film, but he was in Dr. Zhivago, and he struggled through that production with her. The notes that I see is that it was a continual problem on every production that she was in. I guess that's not too bad of an addiction to have. Go back and take a look at this really strange film. I kind of find that it grows on you. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.